Hey tankers and welcome back to World of Tanks with PR154 where we are following Captain Ty of the Flying Squirrels Clan in the Tier 10 Swedish heavy tank, the Kranvan. This is a tank that has a hell of a lot going for it. In, in spite of having a three shot autoloader, it still maintains one of the best damages per minute of a Tier 10 heavy tank. Uh, it also has one of the higher mobility and power to weight ratios of, of a, a tier 10 heavy tank. It's able to head forward at 60 kilometers per hour and has a reverse speed of about 20. Now he's on the Stuzianki map, so a lot of opportunities to play this vehicle from hull down, which uh, also takes advantage of the excellent turret on this vehicle. In fact, if you're using its full 12 degrees of gun depression, you're attracting sort of between 450 to 480 millimeters of effective armor off the turret face. Um, other, other areas of the vehicle, eh, maybe not so good. But we're off to a good start, is being able to intercept the ST1 or STI, depending on your level of gutter brain, as it's gone to uh, cross, the, cross the railway tracks down there at C9. And this is, uh, this is a, a great place for a heavy tank to work between crossing, crossing between this position here so it can support the, the friendly advance through this town or working back towards this stockpile here to prevent enemy vehicles from coming through the middle. Now I expect there's probably a fairly low risk of that because uh, Captain Ty's team has been able to secure the initiative here, uh, here on the hill with the Shah Future 4 and Leopard 1. Uh, they also seem to have quite a strong presence down in the town in the south, which uh, is probably the most important position on, on the Studzianki map. It's very difficult to exert control over this uh, over this coal facility or brick factory um, if if the enemy take control of this of the buildings and the churches here, because it's just far too easy for guns to line up down there. They send a, a forward scout into this ditch in the middle, and then before you know it, you, you're getting you're getting lit up and shot from enemies that are able to reverse angle side scrape off a bunch of buildings. But for now, this this position this position is working. The uh, the enemy team is is trying to play through fairly aggressively in fact they've they've gone beyond the church and they're in control of the ditch here which means that uh, they could exert the most control of vision into this brick factory again uh, captain ty's team also has control of the hill so they have the vision control through the north and doing so with, with vehicles with reasonably good optics like leopard one and Shah future four um so while we've got a little bit of a lull in the fighting, let's have a look at the job that uh, Captain Ty is here to do today. He needs to cause 2,000 hit points of damage from a distance of 300 meters or more, and needs to destroy two enemy vehicles. Now, Captain Ty has already uh, made some gains. Uh, has already made some gains on that, having knocked out uh, the enemy light tank earlier in the piece. So he's in a hanging around on that corner had put them in a fairly good position to continue to rack up those uh, those that long range damage that he needs uh, as his uh, primary mission condition of course that started out with uh, with the shot into the STI um, and then following up with the AE phase one managing to land a penetrating hit on that conqueror which a little bit of a silly poke from uh, from the tier 9 British heavy tank but I guess the enemy team has probably felt it could afford to take a few risks, given that they were, at the time, three guns up on Captain Ty's team. Now, we're taking about 20 to 21 seconds as a base reload to get this gun back into action, but, but once we do, we're hitting for uh, 400 hit points per shot, 440 rather. Um, we're still, still not quite getting those long-range shots that he needs for the primary condition, and the team is still, uh, is two, two, still two vehicles down against the enemy. So we've got great mobility, great DPM, great turret armor. Uh, what's the downside to this tank? Um, main downside is is really in the penetration. Uh, the, the penetration really is quite subpar for a tier 10 vehicle. We've got 252 millimeters of penetration on the standard APCR. Uh, the 
the heat rounds are a little bit better, but it's still only around the 300 millimeters. That's really that's really quite low end uh, for a uh, for a tier 10 heavy tank. Con considering considering in in heavy tanks that that can sort of top out uh, with, with some of the Russian heat slingers at around 340 millimeters. Object 263 uh, and and its APCR still not managing to find purchase on the on the Cranvan. Um, managing a tracking shot on the on the T10, but uh, but still not uh, still not able to follow through with with the uh, the APCR penetration. Um, again, 200 and, uh, 252 millimeters just really not serving them them well against against some of these heavy tanks. It appears that uh, despite earlier concentrated efforts in the um, uh, in the in the the town to the south of the map, Captain Tyre's team has not been able to capitalise. But uh, a few of these well placed long re long range shots has enabled a bit more progress on this mission. So he's really only one penetrating shot away from picking up uh, the primary condition for Coalition Nine of the Chimera personal campaign. Um, Still fighting from behind, they are they are three guns down. But fortunately, there's there's a few low hit point enemy vehicles, and there's the uh, primary mission completion and Captain Ty's second kill of the game. So both primary and secondary mission conditions completed. Um, now at at this point in time, th there's there's no further conditions to be observed. A lot of the time, they come with a requirement to win or a requirement to survive. Uh, so this is kind of sorted for, for Captain Ty, but uh, the great sportsmen that they are, they're going to continue to play to win here. Of course, uh, artillery <laughs> doing their doing their darndest to try to stop them. Broadly speaking, they have been able to uh, to, to narrow the odds here. Uh, they're, they're now only one gun down against the enemy team. And we, we can see a, a very strong gun line developing at, at the rear between the, the two Leopards anchoring the flanks, the Stridsfarn 103 and T30 anchoring the, the rear. So uh, any enemy vehicles that they're going to push through are potentially landing in, in trouble. Captain Ty pushing out to engage Object 263 and uh, two, two shots of the heat shells in fairly quick succession end up sending it back to the garage for the equaliser. So... They are now at seven. Sorry, eight kills aside. Uh, arguably, it's the enemy team that that has that has control over the map. But uh, I guess where everyone ends up positioning when you have that map control is is a different matter entirely. Um, uh, often, if you kind of spread out from A to B and you have map control, that's probably it's probably not all that helpful, and, and you. You really want to try to consolidate and try to push the enemy on a narrower front where they can get um, fewer guns into the game. Uh, certainly, as that uh, certainly as that STI I found out or S ST1, I really should get into trouble with. Uh, I really, I really should get around the idea of calling it the the, the ST1 because, uh, well, you, you don't call the double barrel version the STII, do you? Yeah. We'll work on that. Okay, um, so the enemy appears to be pushing through more than north of the map. We've got the T110E4 that is that has made an appearance. Of course, Captain Ty is still still working to try to cover that south. Uh, he's is aware that that coming to this position uh, has had a strong tendency to expose them to SPG fire. So uh, I, I guess hence working the the other angle, even though there's possibly less likelihood of enemy vehicles presenting there. But uh, like, like we said, they've, they've completed both their primary and secondary conditions, so that is probably victory enough in itself. Now downrange they have found the uh, the enemy Cranvan. Uh, you'll notice that uh, the Captain Ty had briefly tried to aim for the Coppolas. Now, the Coppolas are small, but uh, small but vulnerable weak spots 
on Cranvan. It's they're only protected by uh, I think 170 millimeters of armor, may, maybe even less than that. Might might even be 70 millimeters of armor, uh, but they are really the the only weak spot available on Cranvan uh, when it's playing from a hull down position. Um, and so you, you really you're really going to be quite lucky if you manage to to nail them. But uh, good to good to know in a, in an act of desperation. But uh, ordinarily, it's generally not good practice to poke on on a hull down heavy tank when it's fighting from its optimal position. The enemy Stridsvan 103 has been spotted. As Captain Ty avoids a bit of artillery, and that's a nice hit into the Stridsvan 103. Follow up, just uh, exploring exploring some foliage, I, I suspect. And the third one, a little bit blind, but uh, unfortunately not uh, not managing to catch the kill there. It looks like a blind shot from Leopard 1 has been able to knock out the Stridsvan on this particular occasion, however. So that's one less threat that's going to be coming from the south. Two-gun advantage to Captain Ty's team at this point in time. The uh, friendly Stridsvan 103 is feeling a little bit bold. They're thinking, well, it must be just the Skoda T-50 and the artillery piece that are, that are down there at this point in time. The artillery piece pre-aiming that, uh, that ditch, expecting that the, uh, that the enemy team have ducked down there. The Skoda T-50, um, not quite one-shottable for, uh, for Captain Ty. Well, may maybe... Maybe one shotable with a little bit of favourable RNG, but of course you generally can't rely too heavily on that. Leopard one moving in, trying to engage the the Skoda T50 there. Bit of a uh, risky uh, risky choice there, given that given that the Skoda T50 is an auto loader, um, and they uh, they weren't one shotable for the Leopard one, so there was a little bit of teamwork required there. Enemy Cranvan ending up silencing one of the the lower hit point Leopard ones, and the uh, the, the artillery piece also identified in the uh, in that sort of ditch that runs up the five six line. And that was the that was the artillery piece that was giving Captain Ty such a difficult time in trying to work this work this particular corner. But the artillery piece has been lit up, and the Stridsvan 103 is after them. Uh, Moisten working the corner. Uh, tr trying to trying to fight the the enemy Cranvan on its terms, unlikely to uh, to work out too well in the Moisian's favour unless uh, unless bouncing a heap of shells is the attempted order of the day. Now this is still it, it's still going to be quite a difficult exercise here for Captain Ty to push this Cranvan. He's got to be running on the assumption that the T110E4 and or Char Future 4 uh, are still fighting from this hill, which means pushing across his side is going to be exposed. And the side of the Cranvan is, is quite vulnerable. In fact, it doesn't take all that much um, uh, eccentricity of the turret to really start exposing uh, penable facing on, on the side of the Cranvan turret. So with a, a fairly a flat angle um, to, towards enemy vehicles on the hill, you can imagine that could be uh, quite a high risk scenario there. But uh, they they do have the three gun advantage. Um, Captain Ty is gonna go for it. It's got really nothing, really nothing to lose here. In fact, has not been spotted on that cross, which is indicative of the T110E4 and Char Future 4 having repositioned. So they round the corner, they engage the full hit point Cranvan. One shot, two shots, one more in the magazine before he has to go to reload. And uh, unfortunately uh, goes to experiment with uh, with the um, testing the structural integrity of the brick factory. But into the reload, another 20 second mag reload. T110E4, uh, sorry, the Leopard 1 ending up knocking out the, um, sorry, Char Future 4 end up knocking out the Leopard 1, Stridsvan 103 knocking out the T110E4, and Captain Tyre knocking out the Cranvan. This still leaves the Char Future 4 is still on full hit points. Of course, um, a heavy versus a heavy versus a medium, when you're, you're trading down on hit points, the heavy is going to win almost every time. Um, in this case, uh, Captain Ty very likely to have made up the reload before Shah Future Four does, and they'll have three. They'll have three shots ready to go. One. This leaves a Shah Future Four not quite one shotable, 
but uh, a little bit of positive RNG will uh, will quite possibly make it so. Captain Ty going hunting for this tier 9 French medium tank. Another pos uh, another popular choice from the from the battle pass lineup. Or well, the expedition lineup, if you uh, were an early adopter of the Char Future 4, has been lit up again, having engaged uh, Captain Ty, and Captain Ty ends up sending him back to the garage for their fifth kill of the game. So there's a win. There's another um, mission completion with honors for the Chimera. Let's take a look at the detailed results. So there we have it folks, a win and a well-deserved Ace Mastery, also picking up the high caliber medal for accounting for at least 20% of the total hit point pool of the enemy team. And uh, you definitely expect that one because he's picked up nearly 9,100 hit points of damage. Um, he's also blocked 1,740 hit points. So we're looking at, uh, we're looking at nearly 11k combined there. Um, he's also picked up the Bruiser Medal for causing damage to enemy vehicle modules or crew members at least five times in the course of the battle. He's picked up the Duelist Medal for destroying at least two enemy vehicles that have caused damage to them in turn. And he's also picked up the Fighter Medal for destroying at least four, uh, but up to five enemy vehicles in one battle. This is the precursor to the, the Top Gun Medal, which unfortunately eluded Captain Ty today at uh, five kills coming their way. Having a look at the team score, this was a rather convincing top placement by experience, about 50%, uh, over 50% over the next vehicle, which was uh, which was one of the, the Leopard ones. Um, vastly outstripping uh, his teammates there in terms of damage inflicted. Um, so the runner-up being, uh, being Shin Blank and 717 in the Leopard 1. Um, Honourable mentions on the enemy team. We've got the T110E4 and uh, and their Leopard 1 um, from the Excalibur Tank Company. They've uh, performed quite well, but not quite carrying hard enough. Uh, Captain Ty working extremely, working the strengths of the tank to, to suitable positions very consistently throughout that game. Having a look at the detailed report, uh, this was potentially uh, potentially negative territory there for Captain Ty. Fortunately, the uh, the the personal missions payout there had landed them a net profit of 45,000 credits. Otherwise, that would have been a, a 20,000 credit deficit. Uh, bearing in mind, there was a fair bit of uh, premium ammunition fired throughout the course of that battle. Um, but of course, when you're uh, when you're coming around with uh, with Ace Mastery badges and and 11k combined, I guess uh, I guess the bragging worth the bragging rights are worth the additional expenditure. So very well done there to Captain Ty of the Flying Squirrels Clan. And if you've got a replay that you'd like to see featured on World of Tanks with PR154, please reach out over Discord or any of the links below. We'll do our best to sort you out. Unfortunately, we are getting a little bit picky with what we're putting on the channel at the moment as our content base grows. We're trying to avoid a couple of double ups, repeats, uh, and uh, of course, do check out the About section of our YouTube channel because that has got our community submission guidelines there. In the meantime, take care out there.